Now, here's the other thing. Yeah, Rob. Is there any way to slow it down? So that it's like that? To slow it down with the CD. Oh, true. That's what he's getting at. Oh, you mean use a microwave as an actual photo surface? Yeah, yeah. No. Maybe. That'd be awesome. You should try to make yeah, but I don't know. We could hook I don't know if you can do that safely. Like yeah. I don't think we should do that. Yeah, yeah, you can take yeah, the... You can take the, the um, Actually, remember ages ago there was that debunk video on the internet where four cell phones pointed at a kernel yeah, 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 and then yeah, yeah. popped the kernel? Yeah, that was fake. So they, they, took, they took the microwave apart, took the microwave generator, passed right under the, uh, right under the, the table and poked it and, and used it to poke the, uh, or to pop the popcorn. Uh, so yeah, you could harness the microwave, today, generator, but no. it's not, it's dangerous, very dangerous. Why? Like, but just, like, is that not like really <laughs> enough radiation to actually cause harm? No, no, it won't cause, it'll burn. I mean, it won't cause cancer so or, I like... I can put my hand in the microwave. No, it'll burn you! <laughs> okay, so it'll just burn me. <laughs> yeah, you'll <laughs> die from cancer or from right. burning. How, like, it's not how do I answer die. this? <laughs> you won't die from radiation, but yeah. you'll die from the heat. You'll die from the, or you drastically... Burn you inside of your head. Hand, but, I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> but it won't cause. It doesn't have the in, the. It's there to, it's, it's intensity to ionize. That's right. It doesn't have the intensity to ionize the DNA molecules. So we're good. Although if you <laughs> increase the radiation, <laughs> so, so, so I can't get free. Hey, back, back to the photoelectric <laughs> effect. Because it burns your brain. <laughs> okay. Yes. Is it because the doesn't matter how much light there is, the speed of light is the same. Therefore, the ions go off. That speed of light is the same. That's actually a big part of it, the fact that the speed of light is constant. Um, what we're going to see is it's actually the um, the energy of each individual photon of light Okay, that's required to kick an electron off of the metal surface. Okay, And the higher the frequency, uh, not the intensity, the higher the frequency of light as we get closer and more to the UV, that is the only thing that dictates the um, whether electrons will be ejected to the other plate or not. If I saw a laser pointer at a spoon, it's not going to do anything. No, because it's probably not high enough um, frequency. Good question. So maybe. Okay, I'm going to leave the intensity up at 100 now, okay? And the, what I'm going to vary this time is not the um, intensity, but I'm going to vary the wavelength, okay? And we're going to see that there's... The classical physics said it shouldn't matter what the wavelength is. It should still eject the same energy of photons just based on the intensity. But here's what we find. We change the wavelength. There gets to a point where no electrons are ejected from the surface. No matter how intense the the light source is. The wave looks too okay. long. So what do you guys think is going on there? Uh, wait, wait. Uh, the there gets, a, there gets to a point where the no matter how intense the light is, it doesn't it's it's well defined for each different metal. It doesn't kick any electrons off that surface. So the energy of each photon is less because the wavelength is longer, so that puts it less. Energy is less of each energy photon. Less. Yeah. Great. Going back to... Okay, yeah. They thought that the frequency of light shouldn't matter. It should kick off... As long as it was bright enough, it should kick off electrons. Well, that's right. But... Uh, I'm going back before Planck again oh, in terms of classical physics, okay? Like going back to the ultraviolet decay, yeah. uh, the ultraviolet one is, yes, the catastrophe, but not the, um, not the second curve. All right? All right. That's right. Okay, going back to, um, oh, you threw me off. That's okay. Um, what was I talking about? It doesn't give enough energy. 
That's right. Going back to Bohr's, um, Bohr's model of the atom, right? Each electron state needs to have a certain amount of energy to transition. And if we go to the outer electrons, it needs a certain amount of energy to kick them right off of the nucleus of the atom. And if these photons don't have a high enough energy to kick a, to, to make that electron transition, then the electrons are going to stay put. All those photons are going to do is increase the temperature of the black body. The metal at that point just becomes a black body, and it absorbs photons instead of ejecting electrons. It increases the temperature of the black body, but That's right. not the energy. <laughs> not the no, it just doesn't kick individual electrons out. It does increase the energy by of the black body itself. But that's not part of the photoelectric effect. Oh yeah, let's go back to the note. Oh no, I don't want to close. I want to close you. There we go. So the anomalous observations of this photoelectric effect. The intensity of the light did not affect the energy of the ejected electrons, only the number of ejected electrons. Number two, the color or frequency of monochromatic light that was shined on the photosurface was the only thing that caused an increase of the electron's energy. It was only the frequency of the light that caused an increase of the electron's energy. And three, for any photosurface there exists a minimum frequency of light below which no electrons would be emitted. And we saw that. No matter how intense the light was, there was no uh, ejected electrons at that point. Oh, I got a question. Okay, next page. Okay. Now again, except for the last one, these are just you just need to have a, a qualitative understanding of what the graphs look like. The last graph that we do is gonna we're gonna analyze quantitatively. Okay, the first two graphs we're gonna deal with intensity on the x-axis, the light intensity. So we're going to do two lines on each of them. We're going to do one color for classical physics and one color for uh, actual observations. So let's do um, green for classic. Classical physics said that as the light intensity goes up, the voltage should increase. Okay, the energy of the electron should increase. But what we found experimentally, anybody remember from the actual, what happened to the voltage as the light intensity went up, or the energy of the electrons as the light intensity went up? But the voltage stays the same. same. Good. And again, these are just um, arbitrary values, just, just general shape. Okay. Uh, classical physics also said the current should increase for light intensity. And this was an agreement. Okay, this one's going to be both a linear increase for both of them. But with the caveat, with the caveat that 
the experimental evidence, the experimental current only increased if the frequency was above that critical frequency to actually cause uh, electrons to leave the surface. based on intensity, but only if the light was at a high enough frequency. What's the question? Uh, the... Oh, no, it wasn't. That's a uh, critical frequency for the whole observance. Oh. Yeah. Um, well, uh, later on in the note, that comes clear. So it's so Critical frequency. The critical frequency to eject electrons yeah. from the surface. Yeah. Okay. And the last one, because we're only going to have enough time to get to this last one, I want to do a small exit pass with you at the end of the period. But we're just going to get to this, uh, the third, um, the third graph here, where we're going to talk about current versus frequency. Oh, sorry. Current versus frequency on the x-axis. Okay, so classical physics said that frequency should not affect current. Or sorry, it said that um, the current should be increasing by the, the current by the frequency. And what we found with the actual photoelectric effect. Is that the current is constant, but only after that critical frequency. Okay, there is no current for low wavelengths. We're sorry for low frequencies. There is no current until we get to that critical frequency, where now all of a sudden electrons start getting ejected from the photosurface. That's where I'm going to end the lecture for today. Yeah. Um, after the current in light, the frequency is greater than the frequency of the light. Only for the um, only when the frequency of the light is greater than that minimum that minimum frequency that it starts kicking electrons off of the photo surface. Okay. Remember there was that cutoff when we go back to when we went back to the uh, simulation. When I had the yellow light on the simulation, remember there was no electrons being ejected. Yes. No, if there is no electrons being like received by the like there is no current. That's right. It's okay. He got it now? Okay. Oh, well, this is the camera. <laughs> Why isn't there a critical frequency on the voltage graph? Um. Yeah, because I guess, you know what? I guess that caveat applies to both of the as long as the um, as long as there are electrons being ejected. So yeah, for both of those two upper ones. Yeah.